Welcome back and welcome to section four, optimizing Redshift for scale. Welcome to video one, ingesting enormous volumes of data by copying directly from S3. So one of the really nice things about Redshift is how easy it is to get data into your Redshift cluster. So Redshift clusters are designed to have an extremely fast network connection to Amazon S3. And of course, Amazon S3 is a near infinite storage repository for you to use. It's very cost effective, offers extremely high uh, durability and availability for your data and pretty much near infinite scale in terms of uh, the amount of data that you want to throw at it. Redshift is designed to ingest vast volumes of data from Amazon S3. Now remember that Redshift is not a transactional database and so ingesting data with the insert command is quite slow and doesn't really scale well. So that is if you do insert into table values you run that lots of times to ingest data it's going to be quite slow it's not designed to perform well uh, with a vast number of, of very small and simple queries it's not optimized uh, for queries per second it's optimized um, for performing complex queries on large data sets so that means the best way to get large volumes of data into s3 is to use the copy command and we've seen that in our previous videos problem with copy though is that it can only copy one file at a time sequentially and as we know, Redshift is designed to operate in a massively parallel fashion, and it works best when operations are performed in parallel. So how do we move data to Redshift in parallel? Well, imagine you have an extremely large file to ingest. Well, actually, it's best to partition that file before you upload it to Amazon S3. So S3 has a hard limit of five terabytes per file, um, but really, if you're going above probably a gigabyte or more um, in terms of, of file size, you probably want to start chunking it up. So that allows uh, Redshift to then ingest it in parallel. So you can either specify a directory in an S3 bucket with an object prefix, or then ex or explicitly list the files you want to load in uh, using something called a manifest file. So a manifest file is just a text file that specifies uh, all of the files on S3 or all of the directories that you want to load data from. Now, if you're ingesting data as part of an ETL process, it's probably best to use a manifest file to make sure you're absolutely explicit about the files you want to copy into Redshift. So this is what a manifest file looks like. It's just a JSON file with a list of entries. And this file can then also sit on S3 alongside the files you want to copy. So literally a JSON file with an array of entries. Each entry has a URL and then the path to the file that you want to ingest. And you can also set a mandatory tag. So what that means is if any of these files fail, uh, the whole copy operation will fail if mandatory is set to true. If mandatory is set to false or not set, the copy operation can still succeed, even if some or all of those files don't in get ingested. So let's give this a go with some more of the IMDB example files. So download all of the remaining files from this URL, datasets.imdbws.com. Uh, this time we're going to keep everything as a gzip, upload them all to the same S3 bucket as before, and update the manifest file in the example code provided so that the paths match the S3 bucket location uh, that you've uploaded the files to and I'll show you what to do in just a moment and also upload the updated manifest and make sure the path to it is the same as in the query we're going to use in just a second. So we're done with section three we can close that now we're on to section four so this is our manifest file what you'll need to do is just update this bucket name to match the bucket name that you've created and make sure that you also upload this updated manifest uh, to your S3 bucket so in case you've forgotten, if we go over to the console, click on services, click on S3, I've got my Calibri digital data source bucket. We are going to delete this guy because it's not zipped. And then I'm going to click upload, add files, and go up one level, and I have all of the zipped files here. So I'm just going to select all of those and press the upload button. And I'm sure you don't want to watch this progress bar go up the screen, so I'm just going to pause the video uh, while that runs. Okay, so that's all uploaded. So the next thing we need to do is actually upload the manifest file. So if we just go back, this is the manifest file. Remember, this contains, obviously, describes what we're going to do or the files that we're going to upload. So we need to upload that to our S3 bucket as well. So we're just back on the S3 console. And now we're going to click upload, and we just need to obviously go and find that file. So mine's a little bit buried unfortunately so just bear with me we're going to choose that file click upload it's very small so it shouldn't take long and now we want to copy everything in so go to the copy data script for this section so yep that's this one and the first thing you'll notice of course is we need to update the IAM role 
So uh, you can copy that again from the describe cluster output. So you can just paste that in here. And you'll also notice that we're actually having to copy everything into one table. That's because you can't copy into multiple tables using a manifest. And of course, you'll notice in the manifest file that we've actually copied the same file over and over again. So if we just copy that command and go over to data grip and run it, we can see how long it's going to take. But before we do that, let's just do a little count star on title basic so we can verify that this has done what we expect. So if we do select count star from imdb.title underscore basics. So that was obviously cached. So it came back immediately It's 5.4 million records. So let's now run this copy command and we can run, we can go and have a look at that again. Uh, and what we should see is we will get a little bit of acceleration uh, because Redshift is able to copy multiple uh, versions of that file in parallel. So this is what happens when there's a copy error. So what we can do to debug that is we can select star from STL load errors and we can go and see what went wrong. This is a very useful thing to know because you're probably not likely to get the schema right the first time. Okay, and we can see there what's actually happening is we're trying to copy the name basics file into the title basics table. So that throws an error. So this is a really good way of debugging issues in your copy script. So we can see here, there's a problem. It tells you where it's gone wrong. It tells us what line it's gone wrong. So actually what we need to do is we need to create a name basics table because that's what we should be copying into and not title basics. So we can create that table like this, and then we can give this another go. And I'll just pause the video while that executes. Okay, so that's finished for me. So let's go and take a look at how many records it ingested. For me, that took about two minutes to run. And of course, the first count always takes a little bit longer, but what we can see here is that we've actually ingested 6.3 uh, million records in about two minutes. So if you were, gonna, if you were to ingest file by file, uh, it would take considerably longer than that. So that's, that's a really good speed up.